This is the plaintiff, Erica Lynn Nelson. She says she bought a camper from the defendant, and when she went to register at the DMV, told her the defendant never registered it in the first place and needed to before she can get the title. The stubborn woman refuses to register it. Now she wants to return it and get her $1,500 back, so she's suing. This is the defendant, Doris McCarthy. She says she told the plaintiff the camper was never on the road. It only sat in her yard, serving as an extra living space and sleeping quarters. Seven months later, she complained she couldn't register it and demanded she go to another state to the DMV almost four hours away that day. Bottom line, this is an as-is sale, and she was upfront with her about everything. She's accused of a camper calamity. All parties, so you do it. People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Leon for presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Nelson, you are suing Ms. McCarthy for the return of $1,500 for a camper that you bought from her, which, according to you, cannot be registered. What happened here? Um, so I purchased it from her on um, November 3rd of last year. Um, prior to that, I had gone to look at it, um, decided I wanted it. Have you ever had a camper? I have not. It was my do you have a picture of it? I do have a picture. Did you submit it? Yeah, I okay. did. Give me one second. Is this the kind of camper that you have to tow? Is yes, it right? it's okay. a pop-up camper. Pop-up camper, okay. Right there. This is it. All right, so it's how, how long? Um, I'm not sure. Can the you dimensions. stand up in it? Yes. You can stand up? Mm -hmm. In a normal height. Well, you can. You're, you know, but uh, when could my six foot two husband stand up in it? When we open it, yes. Okay. Oh, because the top is what pops up. Yep. It, you reel, roll it, and it goes all the way up. And there's two beds on both sides. Um, there's a little table with a little couch. Okay. So tell me what happens. You look at it. You like it. I like had you ever? Did you, what was your answer if you ever had a camper before? I have not. This is my all first right, camper. But like everybody else during the two years of COVID, you decided that you were taken to the open road in America. Yes. <laughs> Tell me about it. So you buy it, and how much do you pay? Um, I paid 1500 for it. All right. So when I went to look at it, we were unable to bring it home to tow it that day. Had so, you tested everything before you decided whether you wanted to buy it? I tested the hazard lights, made sure those were working. But as far as everything else, like It I, wasn't hooked up, so you couldn't yeah, test. Okay. but those worked. So, right, um, but she was asking how much? Um, 1900 So that kind of takes into account, I have no idea if this stuff is working. All right, so you decide to buy it. Yes. You tow it where? Um, to my house in okay. Dartmouth. Okay, how far was that? Um, 25 minutes. And then you leave it there untouched for how long? From November until June. Why didn't you register it or attempt to register it before then? Well, I knew that I wasn't using the camper during the winter, so I kind of just pushed it off. I didn't think I was going to have any issues. When oh. I went to the registry, I thought it was going to be. Sure. So that's why I did that. And then when I ended up going in, um, they made me aware that she had never registered it to herself. So I legally could not do anything to the camper until she did that. Right. Which she then had to sign the title over to me, pay the taxes from the time she had the camper, and then I could take it from there. Now, did you ever register the camper? No, ma'am. Campers never... require registration, right? I understand that the basis of me even having the, the pop-up camper was I only used it for, for my son and my daughter when they came to visit. That, that camper never hit the road. It was only my backyard. And, and, I, and I, I know that in your mind that means you don't have to register it, right? Because it's not on the road. It never hit the road. It was only my backyard. I only used the beds. When you register it, two things happen. You pay the state their taxes that they are expecting, and you're allowed to put it on the road, right? You skip the part about paying the state the taxes that they're owed. What is your defense? Is your defense, uh, well, you know, she should have figured that out sooner. I mean, why am I getting this call eight months later or whatever the heck it was? Well, that too, but we also had many discussions about the fact that I never set up any utility. My, my intention was never to take this on the road to go camping. It was only, I lived in a one bedroom home. I'm a single mother of two adult children. When they come to visit me out of state, COVID's going on. They don't like to be, they didn't want to be in the same house. So I bought a pop-up camper, basically used each bed. That's all I used it for. Right. But then you sold it. 
Like, if you just kept it that way, nobody would say, oh, uh, here's a ticket because you have no registration, because you're right, you're not putting it on the road. The question becomes, can you sell it without having paid your own state sales tax when you bought it? Again, she had seven months to figure this out. I she did have aware. seven months, and that's why you do this right away. And maybe you just didn't want to go through the expense if you weren't going to use it, but that was very foolish on your part. Yes. Because if you have a defective title, you want to know right away. But the bottom line is still it's a defective title. So what's she supposed to do? She can't put it on the road. You knew very well that she wanted to put it on the road. And that she, you know, so she's, if she complains now, the sink doesn't work, which I think she did, com she complains about stuff like that, you're right, she can't, that's as is. But the only exception to as is, is if you make a warranty, which you didn't, or if you're jumping title, if you don't have good title, because it is an item that needs titling. So part of the implicit warranty you're giving somebody is here's the title. You'll be able to register it. If she can't register it, she can't move it. That, I mean, that conversation never even came up about No, that's the law is what I mean. I mean that's the I, law. In my, that, in my mind, I had a clean title, and that's... All right, that's but now I'm I here to inform to. you that you didn't, because okay. you, that's called jumping title. Okay. You, and here's why. Because the state of Massachusetts wants your tax dollars. You see? I understand. I right. You were taxes. supposed to pay them when you bought it. Because if the title's not in your name, you can't sell it. That's really what I'm trying to say. The title is actually in another person's name. You get it? All you did was sign it. You can't do that. You're not authorized to sell it if your name isn't on the title. So now what are we going to do about it? You had bought that because you wanted to take a trip that summer, which is over. Yes, I have kids, so they were excited. And again, it's my fault for waiting last minute. When I reached out to her, I never asked her to go that day. I said, you know, I realize it's close to my camping day. I'll have to cancel it. Um, can you go when you're able to? Is and what I said by then you had already moved somewhere else? No, the situation was I had moved back to my home state. I had to move out of the house. The reason why I was selling everything was because the house was up for sale during the crazy real estate market. It sold super quick, so I had to move my belongings out. I right. Where did you move to? To New Hampshire. Came back to Massachusetts. This is seven months after. So it's June 24th. It's also the weekend of my son's 30th birthday. We're having a big family party. Haven't seen everybody in years. And I get this text message about something that occurred seven months ago. Okay, so you were back in Massachusetts. Why didn't you, just as a human well, being, why didn't so you just try to help her get... I did. I mean, the, if you read the first, the, the text message that she sent me, right away I sent, I sent a picture of my license. I gave her my date of yeah, birth. Yeah, she, she can't get it solved. You've got to well, get it solved. Well, that was the first question that she asked, was if you send me this information, that would be really helpful. So okay. right away I did. I mean, I have 30 people at my house. We're trying to have a party. Good morning. Sorry to bother you. I'm trying to title and register the camper to myself, and I'm unable to do so. The registry is saying, because you were physically at the registry, right? I went, I went twice. Saying that you need to fill out the Ma Massachusetts resi registration and title application. There is legally nothing I can do with this camper if not, and I actually have a camping trip booked for next weekend. Can you please give me a call as soon as you get a chance? Thank you. Hello. I gave you the title. I never registered it due to never driving it anywhere, so not sure. I went with that title, but they wouldn't allow me to do anything because it was never signed over to me. I, I understand that neither of you realized what was happening. Not, nobody was trying to pull one over on anybody else here. I get it. The the, does someone have the title? I have the title. Let me see the title a second. Okay. This is in the name of the person who sold it to you. Correct. Right. May of 2019. So Charles signs it over to you and then you never register it. Correct. I'm filing in, I'm filling out an application myself, trying to figure it out, but they're asking for a lot. Are you able to give me your license number and date of expiration? It's asking for it on the form. I'm going to try going with everything that I have filled out again, and hopefully they accept it. And she says, because you went a second time, or is this the same day? I went a second time. All right, just went to the registry for the second time with everything I possibly could. I can't do anything with the camper until you get the title in your name which you then can sign it over to me and I can register it. You also have to pay the sales tax for the sales tax for the past three years, he said. This is what you have to fill out and go to the registry with. When you get the title in the mail, that's when I can come to switch it over to me. I can't do anything with the camper until then. That's 100% correct, everything she just said. Well, I can't do anything this week. I meant to write the weekend. Weekend? weekend? Yes. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Don't understand why just dealing with this now, fair, Fair question. I never put the camper on the road, as I stated several times. It was just used for extra visitors. I also wasn't using it over the winter. 
That's true. So I pushed off going to the registry. It doesn't matter what the camper is used for. It has to be registered under your name before I can legally do anything with it. If you can please at some point in the next month or so, let me know when the title comes in, then I can take it over from there. Thank you. Hi, just wanted to check in and see if you've been able to do anything with the camper. Hello? And you drop off the face of the earth because now you've been informed that you're going to have to pay sales tax, which you didn't want to do, right? Honestly, I just... I. Okay, you can't sell it. You can't sell something that's a titled item unless it's titled in your name. Okay, that's but the I law. wish this would have all happened like within a month. I agree, uh, but it doesn't change the law or my ruling, but I agree. Who's the young lady with you? Um, that's just my best friend. Okay, your best friend. All right, moral support? Yes. Wonderful. Um, were you going on the camping trip? I was planning on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, see? <laughs> see all the people you disappointed? Yeah. All right. Have you fixed up the camper? I have not, so we opened it, we took a look into everything, and I understand I bought it as is, but with everything that went on, like, I was not aware that the sink leaks. No, I, no there's none so blind as she who will not see. You would have to hook it up to find out. So the sink... So you didn't hook it up till when? Eight months after you bought it? Yes. Yeah, you're supposed to do that kind of thing, like, before you buy it, I if know. that's really important to you. If not, then you haggle, and then you go, got a great deal, and I, I know I'm going to have to put money into it. Ms. McCarthy, however, the law is the law is the law, and you cannot sell an item in the state of Massachusetts that you have not registered, an item that, is a, uh, that requires registry. You can't sell it unless it's registered in your name. That's called jumping title. You cannot do that. Uh, and the reason why is because Massachusetts wants their cut. And uh, so you can't sell this. That is the, it's, it's as is in every respect except for that it, there's a title that can be registered. That is a, a, a specific warranty when you're handing somebody a title. So, um, just, okay, so I just have a question um, as far as obviously you're trying to make this right so she can go camping. I understand that that's why she bought it. Okay, so if I go to the DMV, what am I, what am I supposed to do? If you go to the DMV, they're gonna charge you the sales tax that I you understand. didn't pay that you're supposed to pay. So am I going in like blind? What am I bringing? So now, now what do we do though? So how do we I'm solve asking this? You, how do I go right. to the register? And I'm just speaking. I don't have a title. I, I don't, don't know how much anything. they'll charge you, but you would have to pay. Oh, the I'm sure they're going to charge me a lot of money. Right. It's Massachusetts. I pay a lot of taxes already. See, the problem that we're having is you want to go camping and you can't go camping. Yes. And I think you're a reasonable person and you would like to figure out what can be done to make this sale whole and she can go camping and you're not out money. Correct. Right. What has to happen is that you have to go to the DMV and you have to register it in your name and then you'll have to pay the taxes. It's not as much as you think. It's probably gonna be a couple of hundred dollars, which is a lot less than 1500, having to return to her the $1,500 and have the headache of this thing. So if you do that, then you will have done what you're supposed to have done. And then the title will come in your name and then you will get the title to her and then you can register the camper and then we can all go camping. That is a much better solution, right? Yes. Let's do that. I, would you both like to settle the case that way? Plaintiff? Yes. Defendant? Yes, please. Wonderful, wonderful. Send me pictures when you're camping and make sure you take her because you rooked her out of a camping trip <laughs> by waiting so long. That's my verdict. Thank you, ladies. Good luck. So an interesting agreement has been worked out by the judge in this case. The plaintiff's not going to get her money back, but she is going to get a title for the, the trailer that she's seeking. Let's see how she feels about it. First off, Ms. McCarthy is the defendant. Ms. McCarthy, the judge says you are going to have to register this uh, trailer and then give her the title so that she can go on a camping trip. And that's what you're going to do, right? Correct. Yes, sir. So you don't have to give the $1,500 back. Right. And uh, it may cost you a couple hundred bucks, maybe at the most in sales tax. Yes, sir. But uh, it'll then be legal. Correct. Correct? Yes. And are you satisfied with that? Sure. I'd okay, like well, good for on. you. Okay, so it's an amicable <laughs> agreement. Good yes, enough. Sir. Thank you very much. Okay. All right, well, let's see now what Ms. Nelson has to say. She came in suing for $1,500, but now she's going to get the title, hopefully. And uh, she'll be able to go camping. You okay with this, Ms. Nelson? I am. All I wanted was a camper that I could actually use and not just sit in my driveway. So, So all right. So if you're okay with it, then that's, uh, that's a great way to work it. And hopefully next summer you'll be able to <laughs> go on a camping trip. Okay? I hope so. Good enough. Well, congratulations. And uh, it's a great way to work out the case. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Harvey, doesn't ha often happen like that, but uh, that's an interesting twist in this case. What's your perspective? So, Doug, when you go to court, what you expect is a judgment. In this case, the judge figured out how to do a settlement. 
Uh, that doesn't happen in a lot of courts, but in small claims court, the end game is to do justice. And sometimes when you can work with both parties, come up with a mutually agreeable settlement, that's called a win. I found unclaimed money from my dead father. There were three beneficiaries listed, but only two of us were notified. Do I have to split it with the third sibling? Good Lord. Well, <laughs> do you want to have uh, domestic tranquility in the family? I mean, and not get arrested? Yeah, and not, not get in trouble. <laughs> For theft? Morally, yes, you have to. And legally, legally yes, you have you to. You have to. Of and course I, you have yeah, to. I mean, come on. That's uh, that's their money as well. That what? That's not your money to keep. That's right. that's money that your dead father... That question doesn't even need that asking. That question doesn't need asking. <laughs> that's, uh, yes, but you, you know, have to share it with exactly right. who your father intended to give it to. Right, right. In the exact proportions that your father intended it to be given. Absolutely. So be a good sibling and share the money. You know, the only situation I could think of where you wouldn't be obligated to share that money would be if that sibling had killed your father <laughs> and maybe was barred yeah, by, by the, state the, law from a collecting judge or something. would still have to be ruling on that, uh, not just you. Yeah, you know? you're right. You need, yeah. you need a judge's ruling. A probate court that. ruling or something. I, you can't I, I, just yeah, snake yeah. it to the left, you it know, and not tell like, anybody. It doesn't sound like this person killed the father. Or whatever, so <laughs> yeah. just hand over the money share and be a good brother and sister. And, right? and don't be a thief.